Man, so I saw this absolutely amazing video of uh, an interview of Richard Wolff uh, by Abby Martin, uh, who has the Empire Files. I think that's her show name. At least that's the channel, a YouTube channel this video is from. Um, and it, it, it's absolutely fascinating. So what we're going to be looking at here is he's going to talk about, he's going to give us a story about, basically, remember when he, when Jordan Peterson had said that, oh, Marxists won't debate me? After, like, Jordan, Jordan Peterson's a really weird character, right? Because he has, like, no education in Marx whatsoever. Um, he hasn't even read any of Marx's stuff. I think he read the Communist Manifesto when he was a little kid. And then he hasn't read any of Marx's work or anything like that. And he's, like, the latter part of his career, a lot of it's been, like, dominant off of critiquing Marx and his works and Marxism and the USSR. Like, he even says he has paintings like Soviet era paintings to remind him of that kind of oppression. It's just super weird. You know, it's really weird. And anytime you have purported to be this kind of like big critique and debunker of, of Marx, you, you probably should have at least read his work, right? I mean, it's kind of like it would be me coming out and like going after Marx and like, you know, debunking his stuff or trying to without having to read you have read any of his works. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and so Richard Wolff here, he's a really smart guy. I learned a lot just from listening to him. So he's going to tell us the story about how he didn't end up debating Jordan Peterson. And then he's going to uh, debunk Jordan Peterson pretty hard. Let's check this out. Well, I don't know if you saw Jordan Peterson's debate with Slavo Zizek. I thought you should have been debating Jordan Peterson. I think. I Absolutely, by the way. 100% Richard Wolf should have. By the way, there's a reason why he ran for Richard Wolf and had a debate with Slavo Zizek. It's because Zizek is extremely backwards on all social policies, so they had a bit of an agreement, and they didn't even really get into much of an economic disagreement, to be honest. I you did. You done actually. a great job. Oh, I'm, I would love to see that. <laughs> well, I actually did it a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you the story, because you might enjoy yeah. it. A group of faculty and students at Boise State University in Boise, Idaho, about a year ago, sent me a bizarre invitation. Bizarre only in the sense I hadn't expected it. They were having a day-long conference, students and faculty at this university, devoted to the work of Jordan Peterson. Who First of all, what the hell is up with that? Why would a college be having a whole... It's just so weird, man. The cult ship of Jordan Peterson is extremely weird. He has a big influence out there in Idaho. And would I debate him since he has said publicly that no Marxists would dare debate him? So I found this amusing. I did, I have to admit, I didn't know who Jordan Peterson was at this moment, but I liked the idea of someone saying such yeah. a silly thing. And I said, of course I'll debate him. No, sight unseen, I will debate him, you know, if we can work out the details. Badass. A few weeks later, they called me back and they said, we informed Mr. Peterson that you were, had accepted our invitation and we would have, as a featured part of this day, a debate between the two of you. Fine, I said. Oh, no, they said, not fine. He withdrew. So he was gone, but he so angered them by his, you know, acceptance and then withdrawal that they said, why don't you just come out here and <laughs> analyze his work from a Marxist perspective? So I have, in this ersatz way, debated <laughs> Mr. Peterson. That's and that funny. will force me, of course, to read a little bit and see what he has said and done. That's absolutely hilarious. So what he, he makes a joke out of that by saying, in a way, I've debated him because, you know, I went to this uh, conference with faculty and students, which I don't know why they'd be having a full Jordan Peterson works day, which is kind of weird to me. But putting that aside, you know, he gets to go and just debunk all of his nonsense because he cowered it out. Um, and, and so he's going to start getting into a debunk here that I, I, was, I was really interested in. And it really, uh, you know, caught my eye. Let's check it out. Well, we know how little he's actually read of Marx, so yes. maybe that's what scared him. And, and in that debate uh, with Slavo Žižek, he talks about workers and bosses. And he actually says this, Richard. He says, quote, bosses would have to be stupid to exploit <laughs> their workers. I mean, what is your response to that statement and how it kind of mischaracterizes Marx's theory of exploitation of labor? It is so ignorant, which I'll explain in a moment, that it takes you, takes your breath away, because in that moment he reveals that he never read what Marxism has to say or what Marx wrote. Marx's great work is Capital, three volumes, first real volume released 1867, so Peterson has had time to take a look at it. Right in the beginning, 
Marx explains what he means by exploitation. And it's a simple mathematical thing. If a worker during the time he or she works produces more value for the employer than the employer pays them in wages, that's all exploitation means. It has nothing to do with the common sense words, treating somebody nicely or not nicely or in a crude way. So let me give it in a simple American example. If you go look for a job with a private employer and you discuss it and you get to the point of how much am I going to get paid and they say to you, well, we're going to pay you $20 an hour and you agree to that, you know in the back of your mind what Marx is saying here. You know that the employer will never pay you $20 an hour to do something unless during that time you produce more than $20 worth of extra value when it comes time to sell whatever you're helping to produce. Otherwise, there's nothing in it for the employer, and he's not going to do it because he's a nice guy. He's doing it to make money. So if he pays you the 20 you're worth more than that to him. And in that act... You're exploited. You're producing more than you're getting. It's a kind of moment, a eureka moment, for young people when they discover this, either by reading Marx or by their own experience, because it confronts them with a stark reality. You are never going to get paid what you are worth because this system is built on there being a difference between what you add by your labor and what you get paid for doing so. That's what every company is in the business to do. So Marx was saying it's a system that exploits. It's a system built on that difference. For Mr. Peterson to then say, nobody would ever do that because it makes no sense, exposes a level of unfamiliarity, which, you know, Nobody has to know Marx, why not? But if you go around celebrating yourself as a critic of Marx True. and you haven't the most basic understanding, it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Dude, this guy, it's its incredible how well, how good he is at explaining, at explaining different Marxian concepts and, and his ideas. And also, it's also, again, shocking how how ridiculous it is that Jordan Peterson has spent so much time, like seriously, guys, I, there's a, literally just type in Jordan Peterson Marxism or Jordan Peterson communism or the USSR into your YouTube search page. You'll see I, there's one I remember seeing like a Joe Rogan clip where he says like Marxism has a problem with the Pareto principle or something like that. And he just says, he just makes lectures about the USSR and communism. And it's just super weird to me because it's like, what is this weird infatuation at this time, right, with communism and the USSR and different stuff like that? Because it's like that's not really any of the pressing issues today, and so it seems kind of weird. And also, to a lot of people, seems to be a kind of slam dunk type of thing, right? But so not only is that weird that he's even made that like his main topic, but then you also have the fact that he hasn't read jack shit of Marx and can't understand the very basic concept that Richard Wolff just laid out for you. Um, and, and, you know, I just learned. So, you know, that that's that's a very interesting interesting point, I guess, Marx has. is what he So, you know, I, get, I don't want to really repeat exactly what he said here, but he's just saying that, you know, the the capitalist owner isn't going to pay you what, he, what you're worth because if, if they do, they're not making any money. So they have to make a profit, and so in doing that, they're going to have to pay you below what you're providing to the business. So I think the only solution to that really is having uh, worker co-ops, meaning the workers owning the business. And I, I say this because you need to remove the middleman. And so if you're to remove the middleman, which is like, you know, the owner. So, you know, you're taking the Walton family out of the equation or whoever other, you know, extremely exorbitantly rich owner that there is. And you're going to need to have a co-op and have it owned and managed by the workers themselves because in any other way and i think even in even in co-ops there might be some i guess in the sense that marx is talking about exploitation there might still be some of that going on but it'd be extremely low um and it'd be definitely like the lowest you could possibly get i don't know what system would be better than that if there even is one but you know i just think that uh that's probably that's that's the best way to go uh, in order to really kind of maximize you know uh, giving workers what they're actually worth and you know it, it just seems to me like for me 
I feel like it's the laborers who are really bringing the value to a company. And so, you know, while the CEO gets paid a bunch of money, it's like the business goes to, it goes to crap if, if you know, if the workers uh, stop doing it, it immediately comes to a halt. And it's really their labor that's bringing in all, all of the revenue. And so it's kind of ridiculous for the owners to get the money. So you cut out the middleman, you make the workers the owners, then there is none of these, you know, different problems that we have in, in exploitation, as Marx had put it, and, and, and different things like that. So... This is absolutely fascinating, and again, this is the reason why Jordan Peterson has refused to do a debate with Richard Wolf. It's because Richard Wolf is an extremely smart man. He knows what he's talking about. He's an expert in Marx and Marxian theory and what Marx wrote in in the in his three volumes of of, of you know Das Kapital, and so it's just uh, something that Jordan Peterson really can't mess with. And so if you're wondering why he debated Slavoj Žižek and not him, it's for that reason. It's for a couple of reasons. Again, uh, Žižek is kind of uh, socially backwards on social issues, as well as like for whatever reason they didn't really get into much of a, you know, much of a disagreement. But also I want to say that why why would bosses be stupid to exploit workers? I really don't I don't see that either, um, <laughs> and I just find that to be very funny. But the fact that I guess which is like the uh, like the most basic stuff of Marx which he doesn't even understand and he's like this big Marxian critic really throws me off pretty darn big time but let me know your thoughts on this down below and again Richard Wolf is the man listen to his works he de you definitely will learn a lot